Hi everyone, Marguerite here. Today I'm talking about no sewing journal binding. I have gotten a request from a couple of people who would like me to show some examples of journals, art journals, be that they're glue books or junk journals, where the papers are attached in the book without sewing. So there are some fancy examples that you can find of people who sew in the signatures into their book, you know, using some kind of stitching method. And the point of this video is to show some examples of alternatives to doing it this way. So I have eight examples to show you. The first example of a no stitch binding for a art journal is to do something like this. It's where you take a notebook, an existing notebook, and use that as your art journal. With this one, I definitely needed to tear out pages, otherwise the end result would have turned out something like this kind of alligator mouth. So I needed to tear out probably more than half of the pages in this little notebook. Also, I reinforced the spine with, or the pages with some washi tape in between. I think I did it for all the pages, probably. Again, because I tore so many pages out, um, it was just a good idea to, to, do, to do that. And then plus, I liked the way it kind of added a decorative element to the pages that I was collaging. Okay, so that's idea number one. The next idea is to hole punch and then use rings. So it is not exactly the easiest way to, um, to be able to open pages. You know, things get stuck or I, I suppose I could make the holes bigger, right? Um, so that's, that's kind of a con. That's a negative thing about this. The positive is, is that I can open these rings and I can adjust or I can move the pages around if I don't like the order or if I want to take something out, remove it. I can very easily do so with rings. Here's another, some more examples. These little guys here. These are just little jump rings and um, I don't know what tool I use to make those tiny little holes, but I'm sure you could come up with something, right? These are just playing cards. So these, this is a tiny little book. I haven't even finished the pages on these yet. I just kind of put it together. Um, so this is, this is, this will be kind of fun to work on. So with holes and, you know, rings, another idea is to do holes, but use string. Now this book is fragile and it's supposed to be fragile. That's kind of the point, right? And so inside, I have my pages and the pages are very thin, plus they've been warped because they were sitting in water for a long time. And again, there's this kind of, um, it, they're just very frail. So what I did was I reinforced the points where there was going to be a punch with more pieces, more layers of paper. Sometimes I used these little hole enforcers, reinforcers, I don't know what they're called. These ones I think are, are kind of a cloth or at least something woven there. Um, sometimes I used a stamp, label, pretty much anything that was, you know, kind of a, kind of a creative idea to just reinforce those spots. And for the most part, for the most part, I think it works fine. This is a piece of ribbon, obviously. 
And then sometimes I just um, kind of sandwiched a piece of paper. That also kind of thickens it up a little bit. Okay, this is a ticket and that's just stapled on. Okay, so that's another example of holes with string. And I have one more. This one, for the covers, I actually put the eyelets in here, right? I also reinforced these pages because the paper can be kind of it can be kind of thin. This this the structure of this paper is more solid because this was not in water at all. So these papers hold up pretty nicely, but still I included those little rings on there. And these are just these are just interesting papers, right? an old birthday card 1947 here this is reinforced again because this one is this one's a little bit on the thin side okay all right so that's with string next is the bind it all this is a zutter bind it all you have probably seen me talk about this in one of my other videos when i talked about eclectic page glue books so i like to just put together a bunch of random pages in the size of something like a postcard there's a postcard sometimes i use these um, pattern paper because they're kind of thick um or just like this i don't know Looks like, looks like a piece of cardboard from a cereal box or something. Um, and just kind of layer them up or stack them up, punch them, and then use the binding of this bind it all to put it together with a metal ring. There's also the cinch. Um, people, I've heard people say good things about it, that they like using it. So this is another way to create an art journal or a blue book. Um, with a bunch of random papers. Next is another example of what you can do to put pages into a glue book is to use a stapler. This was, I used a long arm stapler and I actually created a video on how I put this one together. I will link in the description box here. You can see the staples. I the uh, long arm staplers are not expensive. I bought one off of Amazon and it was under $20. If you are going to if you want to do something where you are creating kind of these junk journals with um papers like from a magazine uh, that are kind of thin, you can really stack them up. You can just have a lot a lot of pages with the magazine ones because they're very thin. Um, but I, I mix them together with all different kinds of papers and then use the long arm stapler to, to put it together. Another way to create a glue book is to fold. And I don't have an example of a large one, but I, I have seen them. I just, I haven't made one myself, so I don't have a really good example to show you. But this is this is an example a zine is something where it's an ordinary piece of paper and then it's cutted or it's folded and then cut so that you can it turns into a book right so you could take several of these types of folded you know blank and then stack them on top of each other and just glue glue one side glue the other side and and create um, several pages or several sections of something like this um, where to find larger pieces i know that you could go for example to a printer like kinko's or fedex whatever it's called and buy large i don't know what is that 17 by 28 um you know just large papers and you can experiment with folding them in the style of a zine and see what kind of of glue book or journal you could make that way. 
Here's another example. This is an example of a glue book I'm working on and I've had it on, near my desk for years because I don't know or I haven't known how to bind this. So I have covers and then I have these pages and I've been reluctant to punch holes. I don't want to punch holes in this. Um, and I've been trying to come up with ideas of what I can do to, to attach these pages together. And what I have found, I have seen other artists do this. Most recently I saw Robin Murray Smith use this. This is, I guess it's a kind of tape, packing tape that is used to hold together boxes, very sturdy boxes. And what I want to do is to cut out a piece and then cut the piece right down the middle in half. And then of course you have to wet it because it's glued, glue back here. And what I and what I will do is I will go go like this. I will bind these two pages together like this. When I put down my pieces on here, I've only attached them in the middle. So I just used a little bit of glue stick on the top or in the middle just so that I can move these pages so that I once I figured out how to bind, I would do so like this. I, I mean, it's not the perfect solution. Yes, you're going to see the tape but at this point, I think this is the best that I can do. And so I'm actually, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to putting this together. I don't, it doesn't look bad. I don't think it looks bad at all. Um, when I work on this, I will record and I will show you how I put it together. And that way, that way you can see if it is working and what I what I decide to do. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. So that is another way to bind. What else am I missing? What other examples have I not shown you? Um, no binding. <laughs> Here is an example of cover and inside, again, I was thinking, oh, how do I do this? Should I make holes in this and then stick it in here? Um, I kind of like it, just a stack. It's just, it's nice. And well, I keep this flat on, on a surface on a, on a shelf. So nothing falls out or gets, gets lost. And I like the idea of being able to, you know, just have them loose. You know, maybe eventually I want to put them in a different kind of project, right? Um, so I just have these really cool pieces of paper in here for now. And, you know, uh, I don't want to bind them. So I'm going to leave them. It's a collection, right? It's a collection of stuff. So I will leave them in here for now just as they are. Last examples. Here's another example of a hole punch with a small ring rather than the big fat metal ring. You can get a small ring and this works really well, right? It's super easy to turn. Again, because the size of the ring versus the size of the hole, that also makes a difference with, you know, how how easy something can turn. So um, this is something that works really well, I think. This little tiny book I made with ink box cards. What I did was I created a master board and the master board is 12 inches by 12 inches so one of those big squares and then from that I cut out 16 squares three inches a piece which is the size of an ink box card and then once I had them I, I put them back to back and 
attached them with a piece of Tyvek in between. I also made a video about this one, if you're curious to see. It's pretty much, it's almost like no binding. You can't see hardly anything in the middle. And then here on the spine, I just used a piece of ribbon and then one more ink box card on the top to kind of hold it all together. So this turned out really cute. I like it a lot. This strange, I don't even know what it is, um, but it's envelopes that have this hole punched in them and then they have these pockets obviously. And I used, oh, I got a lot of currency. I didn't realize I had all this stuff in here. Okay, cool. Um, I collaged on these envelopes and I added a few papers as well. But this binding is just so unique. This, these do have eyelet um, brass uh, reinforcers to help, right? But then how is it, it's, it's, okay, well obviously here's this string, then here's what the back looks like. So how does this work? Okay. Can you see that? You see? Um, and then like this. There we go. So it's kind of, this is kind of a unique, a, new, a unique system, right? This is very clever. I might, I might create something similar. And again, with the metal reinforcing this has lasted this really stands up this really stands up through time and then you can take things out reorganize you know put them in the order that you want so this is a really fun idea now i did want to talk briefly about sewing so this kind of sewing is very complicated it's not easy to do, at least for me, it takes me a long time to do. And um, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a challenge, um, but the result is so pretty that it's always been worth it to me to try and to do this, to try and put it together. Here it's got three signatures, three rows, seven holes. Yeah, okay. Um, so that is complicated, but I also, very often do the three hole pamphlet stitch. One, two, three. And this is covered up with a napkin, a piece of napkin over it. So you can't even hardly see that it's there. And then on the inside, what does it look like? This one, here it is. Um, if you don't, like it. If you don't want to see it, what you can do is if you have something like, well, whatever, two pieces of paper or an envelope that you use, you can, you know, double side tape on the top and on the bottom, and then you can have a pocket here, right? And you would not see this inside. That is um, something that you can do. And Here's another example where you can see it. Um, I, it doesn't bother me. I've got these on the inside. Some people like to do it the other way where you've got the string hanging out. Obviously it's preference, personal choice. But I really do like the three hole punch pamphlet stitch and it's not difficult to do. It's probably more more of a challenge to find the the string or the twine to, to use um, but to do the stitch itself it's not difficult to do and the pages stay in pretty well at least they they have for me so experiment with it that's the only thing that you can do basically um, experiment with all the different styles of binding these journals all right, so those are my examples of all the different kinds of journals and things that I'm working on. If you have some suggestions of how you like to bind your journals, how you like to bind your junk journals or art journals, 
please do let me know in the comments. I would love to learn and to get some new ideas of how to do some unique binding. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time.